Hello everyone, and welcome to our fourth Toronto Dynamo user group event. My name is Mohsen Esakaf, and today I will be talking about how you can extend Dynamo's capabilities through the use of zero touch nodes and extension development. So for our agenda today, I'll be doing a little introduction about myself and what I do. Then we'll briefly go over what the C-sharp programming language is, followed by an overview of what zero touch nodes and extensions are in Dynamo. I'll then be going over a few examples of zero touch nodes and extensions, and then we'll finish the talk with some closing thoughts. So my name is Mosin Asakaf, and I'm a software developer working at Turner Fleischer Architects uh, here in Toronto. I recently finished my final semester of college studying software engineering technology at Centennial College, where I got most of my ex expertise on programming in general. Um, I'm also one of the founding committee members of the Toronto Dynamo user group, which we created following an Autodesk Dynamo hackathon that took place at the Toronto Autodesk office last summer. And uh, my, main interest, uh, my main interests lie within computer graphics, architecture, and game development. So what is C-sharp? And I'll just be giving a basic overview of C-sharp as a programming language. So C Sharp is a programming language that was developed around the year 2000 by Microsoft as part, of the, as part of their .NET initiative. Some of its key features include being a strongly typed programming language as opposed to being a strongly and dynamically typed programming language such as Python. For example, uh, what I mean by this is that when you have a variable in C Sharp, you can explicitly say that it is a string or it is an integer or it's a, it's a floating number, which is a decimal number. Whereas in Python, you don't explicitly say that. Instead, Python determines what the type of the variable is, uh, depending on what you assign to it. Uh, C Sharp also follows an object-oriented paradigm, meaning that everything in C Sharp is considered an object, and objects have properties and methods that can be manipulated throughout the execution of the program. A uh, simple way of thinking about this is to think of a car, where its properties are the make and model, and the methods are uh, the, the engine starting and the engine stopping. Uh, the object-oriented uh, paradigm has more key features such as encapsulation, polymorphism, and abstraction, but I won't be covering that in this talk as it sort of goes beyond the bounds of it. C-sharp also has its own G, uh, GUI, GUI, or graphical user interface frameworks for developing applications. Uh, these GUI interfaces are mainly Windows Forms and WPF. These are the main technologies that are used for it. However, there are third-party solutions such as uh, GTK Sharp and WX widgets. This means that you can develop C Sharp applications that have the user interface, allowing users of your application to have more control and interaction with your tool. Moving on, we'll uh, quickly go over what Dynamo Zero Touch nodes and extensions are and what they are capable of. So, uh, zero touch nodes allow developers to create uh, custom Dynamo nodes in C Sharp and allow integration with the Dynamo or Revit APIs along with other third party APIs. Uh, extensions are also developed using C Sharp and can use the Dynamo Revit API and other third party libraries. But instead of nodes that are built, uh, they, the extensions are, are like many applications that are hosted within Dynamo. You can think of these uh, extensions as though they're like add-ins for Revit, but instead of Revit, they're for Dynamo instead. Uh, zero touch nodes are also faster than Python nodes since zero touch nodes are pre-compiled into DLL files and are optimized um, into faster bytecode uh, rather than uh, being compiled when the node graph is run in Dynamo, which is the case for uh, uh, Python nodes that you sometimes are more familiar with. Uh, zero touch nodes are also a little bit harder to develop for as you would need to work with compiling DLL files and knowing how to structure the code properly so that it works in Dynamo. Uh, whereas Python nodes are simply, uh, you know, you write the code and you run the graph and the code works. Um, I would still say that since zero touch nodes are a little bit harder to develop for, they give the developers a lot more control over the variables and you don't have to deal with uh, nuisances of Python, such as variable type mismatches and other common Python errors that can be easily avoided uh, by using C-sharp instead. Zero touch nodes and extensions all can also utilize third-party libraries quite easily, and they provide users access to functionalities that don't exist in either the Revit or Dynamo APIs, thus extending their use cases that Dynamo covers straight out of, out of the box. So, now I'll be going, going over a couple of examples just, so, just to show off the capabilities that can be accomplished throughout the development of zero touch nodes and extensions. I'll also be giving a little bit of a demonstration of the anatomy of zero touch nodes. 
uh, along with how one can better debug the functions of a zero touch node uh, through Visual Studio. Um, so I'll go over here. So as our first example, um, this is the uh, this is like a extension or actually a zero touch node that I developed for the Toronto Dynamo user group uh, GitHub page. Um, what this does is basically it allows users to um, import whatever 3D mesh file that you want from whatever program that you developed in, uh, whether that program be SketchUp or Blender or 3ds Max or whatever it is. Um, and basically this uh, package allows you to use the nodes to import those files into Dynamo and then uh, do whatever you want within Dynamo and then bring it into Revit later on if you want. Uh, this was actually before I found out that there was a thing called the Mesh Toolkit in, um, that was already developed by uh, Autodesk for Dynamo. And this, I would argue that this provides a lot more uh, functionality than what I've been able to develop already for the Toronto Dynamo User Group's GitHub page. So I would urge you guys to use um, this because it's a really cool package and you can do a lot more than what I'm able to offer in this package. Um, Hopefully I'm able to revisit this to maybe include more features or I'll probably um, turn it into another uh, package altogether. Uh, the second example is DynaWeb and what this does it is, is it allows uh, graphs in Dynamo to be able to interact with uh, web APIs. So basically whenever you're accessing a website, you're basically sending a get request to a website to or actually a web server and you're receiving the web page itself. So that allows you to, be, uh, this package basically allows you to interact with web APIs within Dynamo itself. And uh, it's a really cool package altogether. Um, the third one, the third example that I want to go over is Dynamaps, which is developed by Mustafa El Ayubi. Um, basically this allows you to import um, map data from OpenStreetMaps, I believe, uh, directly into Dynamo. Uh, for example, you can navigate to any location that is available in OpenStreetMaps and you're able to import various data from OpenStreetMaps into Dynamo and you can manipulate the data however you want. Uh, so now I'll be going over a quick overview of how Zero Touch Node will work in Dynamo. Um, I'm going to be using my uh, package that I developed for the Toronto Dynamo User Group's GitHub page, which is the model loader. Um, so I'll basically like, I can show you how breakpoints work, for example. So we'll put a breakpoint here, uh, one here and one here, and then we'll start it. It'll run Dynamo. And in Blender, I developed this model, this very simple building model. Um, and I'll be bringing it into uh, Dynamo using our package. I'll set this to manual. I'll load this here. I'll open up the file through file path load the OBJ, uh, and if I run the graph, you can see that it hit the breakpoint here. Breakpoints are basically if you want to stop execution of the code in order to analyze variables. So you can see the file path is this location here. Uh, this scene has meshes is a Boolean true or false uh, telling me that this file has meshes inside of it. And this private method, which means it won't be seen in Dynamo itself, allows you to basically converts the asymp, which is the third party library um, that I'm using with this uh, package. I'm converting it from the asymp mesh uh, library into a Dynamo uh, mesh. And this is basically the functionality. I'm going through the vertices of the mesh and I'm converting them into Dynamo mesh, uh, Dynamo vertices instead. Um, so you can sort of see that happening. You can see that it's re uh, returning a Autodesk Dynamo mesh. And if I hit continue again, you'll see that the mesh has been successfully imported into Dynamo. Um, so I'll continue on. So just to summarize, uh, zero touch nodes to deliver more power to developers and make it easier to develop custom nodes for Dynamo without the nuisances of Python. Uh, Dynamo extensions allow developers to develop GUI or graphical user interface uh, applications within Dynamo and allows users more custom control and input to manipulate the program. Uh, there are also hundreds of C-sharp libraries out there that can possibly use within Dynamo. And these libraries can extend the use cases of Dynamo way past its limits. 
And finally, I really do urge uh, community-based development because having your code as uh, open source, uh, of course, protected by licenses that are very much available, um, it propels the industry forward and it makes the bar for entry lower for newcomers to this platform, um, thus sparking new ideas and creating a snowball of innovation. Uh, thank you. This is just an uh, image showcasing a Blender monkey model being imported into Dynamo. And you can find me, you can email me at mohsen.asakaf at turnerflacer.com, or you can connect with me on LinkedIn at this link. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>